You're listening to The Bridge on Power 104.1 FM. My friend has arrived, uh, the person that's going to help us out with our questions today. She's a mother, a wife, and uh, she works, yes. <laughs> and her forte is leadership. And many of you might know her from the different circles, uh, either at work or church or maybe ministry. Regardless of where you know her from, she's here today to help us deal with our issues on commitment, especially in marriage. Dorothy Chisaka, it's a pleasure to have you in studio today. Thank you, Becky. It's a real joy to be here and to finally meet the famous Becky. Ah, <laughs> the famous Becky. That's interesting. It's a pleasure yeah. to know that I am famous. Yeah, I've had the name. I've had the name from, uh, yeah, from different forums. From different uh, yeah, forums. But I've never had the pleasure ah, of seeing your face today. But you know, I've had your name too from different okay. forums. So I yeah. guess... Yes, I guess you're famous too. <laughs> Congratulations <laughs> thank, on your marriage. Thank you so wow. much. Thank you very yeah. much. It's nice to finally be here. I know. Someone should have told me sooner that marriage was this awesome. It is, isn't it? <laughs> it is. <laughs> but however much they tell you, you can't know until, until you get it. Exactly. It's like swimming. You must experience the water. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. And now there are people who are married that don't want to be married anymore. Yes. And uh, this morning we want to talk about... Uh, People who say, why do I have to get married? Why should I be married mm. if I can get everything that the married can get absolutely free of charge? Yes. Why should I commit myself to a relationship, tie myself down to one spouse mm -hmm. for life mm. when there's plenty <laughs> of people? <laughs> <laughs> I can really? taste this and that and I that. know. Yeah. Really, really. Why, why, why mm. would I do that to myself? There's yes. so much to go around. I mean, there's so many girls, so many boys. Mm. Why should I stick to just one partner yeah. until death? Yeah. Uh, why? Well, why should I uh, marry someone if I can have sex outside marriage? That's Is it? I mean, what's wrong? The world doesn't think it's I wrong anyway. Children. I can have children. Yeah. I'm financially stable. Yes. I can take care of myself. I don't need someone to take care of me. I don't need to add monies mm -hmm. together with someone to actually have a life that I've dreamed of. Mm -hmm. I can do it myself. I have a job. I'm, I am successful. I don't need a partner. Wow. So, that's what we want to ask. Mm -hmm. In fact, let's start with. For the person who thinks they don't need to get married, mm -hmm. Hmm? Mm -hmm. why is it so important for them to commit mm -hmm. to a relationship? Wow, that's a big question. And I wish I could say I had a, a one good answer, but I don't. Because uh, uh, it would be easy to say the Bible says, but I don't think that's good enough. Why should you be committed to one person why should you get married why should i get married you know becky the truth is we need to look at things in a larger context than just about me uh the person seated in my chair because we belong to each other we are a huge society and i'm not talking about just your small family or about kpc or dc i'm talking about the community of uh, which God has created. And uh, the way he has formed us, he, we, ha we are made for companionship. And he has chosen that uh, you have one person, uh, in t if you're married, that one person who is your constant companion. The reason actually that um, Eve came into a Adam's life was to be a companion. God said, it's not good for a man to be alone. I'll make him a helper that's suitable for him. Mm. So the principle, the the principal thing, the real foundation of the two coming together is that companionship. Is that I don't want to even call it friendship, because companionship is actually more than, than friendship. friendship. And some people think that, well, if the friendship is not there, why should I continue with the relationship? Mm. But friendship actually can be built if you have agreed on the foundation that we are going to be companions for life. That's true. Yes. So, um, you have to stop thinking about the selfish, the just me, me. And, and it is a journey. Even yeah. when you get married, mm. it, initially you're really just thinking about you, yourself. You, you. Yes, and uh, then you realize actually, uh, I uh, Becky has a family. They're all part of this marriage. Then we have children. And it's no longer me, me, me. But it is a wider circle than just you. So the first reason I would say is it's not just about you. Okay. And when you get married to this man, you know. Uh, you have sexual intimacy, you have all sorts of other emotional intimacy and everything. And uh, 
you don't want to go around having that with uh, everybody else so many <laughs> other people it's mm. there is a need to commit and learn how this will actually play out how this will unfold how it will grow you know mm. and that cannot be done i mean you cannot try for one month or for one year or <laughs> two years and say i have failed but there are people who say they get bored along the way of i'm i'm bored with it of i've tried i've committed Mm. I'm finally here. Mm. We've worked it out. We've walked this intimacy walk sexually, financially, mm. emotion. I mean, we've 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 done we've it. We've done it. Mm. One month, two months, three months, and uh, I'm not really feeling it because it doesn't seem to be working. Mm. It was fun before, but now I'm bored. That's correct. Mm. You know, I w- the, I've been married for 26 years, Whoa. and uh, that's a long time, <laughs> it's right? A very long it time. could be longer than your <laughs> lifetime. <laughs> it's very long, <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, there are moments when our marriage is like, whoa, you know, th- this is uh, uh, heaven on earth, you know, mm. this is paradise. And there are moments like, oh my God, what did I see in him? What did I see in <laughs> her, you know? It's uh, not so much boring, but it's worse than boring. It's like, you know, I don't, I want out. Mm. And there, sincerely, there are people out there who are better than your wife in many things, who are better than my husband in many things. Mm. But it is not so much about that excitement at all because they are better than your spouse. It is a commitment to this one person for life. It is a commitment that you have made to yourself and to and to God and really to community mm. that I'm comi- committed to this man. You may be more good looking, you may be, you know, I may have attributes that I, I admire, mm. but I am committed here. So the question of it's boring is neither here nor there because boredom will come <laughs> and go. Will come and go, thank you. <laughs> will come and go, but you cannot base opting out based on, on boredom. And maybe, therefore, we need to find what can help us take care of that boredom. What is mm. it that we are doing? that is causing our marriage to become boring, what can it, is it that we can do to take the boredom out of our marriage, out, out of our relationship? That's I mean, we have, interesting. We have girlfriends and we have boyfriends, you know, not mar- for marriage, but friends and, yeah, outside friends, our relationships. Yeah, yeah, even mm. before we get married. And there are times when you say, ah, now you are boring me, yeah? <laughs> but do you give them up? <laughs> no, you say, let's go and do this, let's go and do this. You come you, up with fun ideas exactly, to actually enjoy exactly. the friendship with your friends. And uh, sometimes when we are married, we kind of exclude ourselves, especially when the marriage is new. It's like we must do our thing to mm. the two of us. You know, we must, no, 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 no. Build a community around your marriage that mm. supports your marriage. That supports your marriage. Because marriage. you become lonely and actually you become bored of each other (laughs) and you have to intentionally plan how we relate with other couples Mm. with other single people with older couples with younger couples because it brings the zing zong zang (laughs) into your own relationship Mm. when you exclude yourself it is so easy to be bored of each other so build a community of people meaning do not stop fraternizing after you get married not at all Uh, get friends in fact make new friends if possible and and, and rekindle your old uh, friendships keep them going yes so that you do not get bored one morning and wake up and say I want to give up and now it's intentional because Mm. your friends are different and his friends are different Mm. but now you build friends intentionally because you talk about it Mm. let's go and have lunch with so and so or let's go out with so and so and it's not any any couple because now you're trying it's intentional um building community around Mm. your own marriage this is interesting. Yes. If you have any what ifs around this one, 0753-104-104 is the SMS line. Feel free to call us on 0414-34-2020 and uh, send a message on our Facebook page, 104.1 PowerFM with a capital P, Twitter at PowerFM Uganda. Tag it, Bean and Tele. We'll be right back. At Inside J Moss on Twitter, J Moss coming in with Corbin Love at uh, nine minutes on to 12 noon. You're listening to the station that's all about love. And this is your love week. This is The Bridge. And uh, before that, we listen to We Love Us by Corey Bowie, all right here on Power FM. And my dear friend who says you have a question for <laughs> Mrs. Chisaka. Okay. You say that mm-hmm. what if he meets all the criteria? Yes. <laughs> but there are no butterflies. <laughs> so you're already married or not married yet? Not married. I mean, you see him and you like him. Uh-huh. He has, you've ticked all the boxes. Uh, he's tall, he's dark, he's handsome. Uh, he's, 
he's Christian. He seems to have sense. You can have uh, a conversation with him. Yeah. Uh, you like the way he chews. Uh, yeah. And everything. <laughs> But yes, but there are no butterflies. You uh-huh. don't you don't feel those things that they talk about in your tummy and um, <laughs> and you can swooning and, and everything. Swooning. Yeah, exactly. You can still <laughs> breathe. So yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. You know I, I love the butterflies, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> don't feel. But when it's all said and done, butterflies don't make them the commitment, they don't make the marriage. Mm. But so exciting, you know, to be in love and fall in love and just seems to just drive you, you know. <laughs> and uh, I there was a time when I used to say no, you can't go if there are no butterflies. <laughs> But after being there for 26 years, mm, the butterflies you, don't matter. You, they don't. Really? They really do not. So, so, but if there are no butterflies, that means uh, <laughs> he just, I mean, you've just ticked bo- boxes. Then there's no attraction. <laughs> no, but the friendship can grow. You, yeah. can, you can really develop a friendship and you can actually fall in love. Well. Yeah, you because you look at the at the arranged marriages. Do you mm. think there's always butterflies and of stuff? Of course not. And I yet those marriages so. really last. Not just in the Bible, but we see our, uh, the Asians. Mm-hmm. You know, they use that kind of arrangement. Mm. And uh, I, I really don't think it is necessary. Somebody, you shouldn't write off somebody because you don't feel that warmth coming over you whenever you see them, because it can grow. It can grow. A friendship can grow. And they are friends, you know. Okay, not boyfriends, but friends. You did nothing. Not, there was nothing magical or chemical when you <laughs> saw them the first time. But uh, over time, you there's grew. such strong friendships. So, yeah, it's a, it's a huge debate. It's uh, a huge debate. But my own take on that uh, is that you don't need those butterflies. Eh. <laughs> so, first time I've had... Anyone dismiss butterflies? Really? Because you see, Hollywood has told us butterflies are important. <laughs> no, they are not. They are not. If somebody, if you check all the boxes, mm. then you really want to try and um, give relate. it a chance. Yeah, give it give a it. chance. Don't, don't, don't just throw it away. So now, after we have ascertained that this ge- this gentleman or this lady yes. is the perfect person for yes. you to pursue a relationship yes. with, what then is the right code of conduct? What then do I do? Mm. Because, I mean, they're telling me no kissing, no mm. touching, mm. no affection. Mm. D- just don't, mm. you know, awaken love until it's so desired. Yes. So, so, so whatever you do, greet them from a distance if possible. <laughs> One <laughs> meter apart, Exactly, right? I mean, have a conversation <laughs> with a chaperone, you know. <laughs> make sure you're not alone together. Yes. Ever, ever, ever. Yes. Does this still apply? Does it still apply? You know, I would like to say it should still apply. <laughs> I remember when we were married, we were telling some of, some couple that came to visit us, we were counseling them. Mm. And Peter said, you know, I never kissed Dorothy until we were married. They were like, what? <laughs> and all of a sudden, our counseling session went cold because like, it was apparent. I think they were they, already they doing already, that. Yeah. You know, there are dangers. Once you get physically involved with a person, it's mm-hmm. you move from one level to the next, to the next, to the next. And uh, there is no pulling back. Because if we've gone so far, why can't we go to the next step? Mm. So you think, uh, you believe actually, yes. that if if we kiss, yes. the chances are we are going to go farther. That I believe. You, 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 your first kiss may be just a little touch, mm-hmm. but the next one will be even more stronger and to be a deeper embrace and then the hands are all over each other and it just grows the it's the way history. relationships are intimacy has levels mm. so you become intimate on the physical level before the right time intimacy on a physical level just grows from one degree to the next to the next it's not even you don't say let's take it th-. no it just <laughs> happens automatically so i'd mm. rather you leave it at the emotional level you the spiritual level and don't don't awaken that physical need mm. until you're really ready because it's not what you want mm. your body longs for it but honestly it's not what you want In because that time. again becky what if it so happens that this does not work out of course you forgive yourself of course but there is something that stays in your mind you mm. know you struggle with that because a piece of you has been given a away a piece of you has been given away so is it safe to say that we should stay away from sex before marriage because of in in the case that it doesn't work out 
you but will not have lost a, that a is lot one of you. reason that mm. is just one one reason mm. but really the fundamental is that it is uh, we as christians mm. don't believe and know that that's not what the lord would have us do that's not what the lord would have us do. yeah that is bottom line but again people want to say but practically dorothy practically dorothy Practically is that you don't want to have been known by five men <laughs> True. before you get to your real man. Mm. And you would, you don't want to unwrap this gift. I remember one, one gentleman that um, counseled Peter and I said, say, just take it, Peter. Peter, take it that you have a gift going to be unwrapped on the right day. Mm. Let that thought, you know, captivate your mind so that you don't keep peeping on this gift and peeping <laughs> on this gift. So, yes, the Lord would, la- would have us stay away from that. But it's easy on you, on your memory, on your emotions, just to know that's a no-go area for me. It just takes away some burdens, mm. unnecessary burdens, mm. you know, that uh, on your life. You don't want to be carrying that. But again, you know, many of us, have gone that way already. I don't want people walking around saying, oh, for us, we are doomed. Yeah, no, you f- if you forgive yourself, but this is the first day of the rest of your life. Mm. You don't have to keep going like that. You really mm. don't have to. You can stop that way of life. You can get into community and uh, uh, start talking about this honestly, get some accountability partners around yourself. Pray, ask for the Holy Spirit to help you because mm. you really don't want to going around like that. Oh, very, yeah. very true. Looking for deeper and deeper experiences with different women. It just goes on and on. And we all need help because it doesn't stop in singlehood, even mm. in marriage. If you've been doing that before marriage, even when you're married, you'll be looking for other relationships. You'll be looking for other relationships. Your marriage. Okay, that's a very interesting perspective. We'll, we'll, we'll hint more on that in uh, next hour because now we're newsbound. One minute on to 12 noon. Joanie Tanaso is here to take you through the news. But before we go into the news, uh, Dorothy... Yes. What about now? This is a question you're going to help me answer also in the next hour. Mm. The people who are committed, yes. mm, they know they're going to get married. Let's call them engaged. Yes. Mm? They're engaged. and everything. Exactly. Mm. So they're affianced. They, yes. have, they have a ring, but mm. they're not yet married mm. in church. Yes. Mm? For them, why should they stay committed to mm. purity if the laws of the land mm. Mm, traditionally mm. say they are married? Mm. Why should they wait for the day they stand before an audience mm-hmm. and church and say, I do? Mm-hmm. Should I mean, should they still be committed to purity? Because either way, I'm still mm-hmm. married to this yeah. gentleman traditionally. That is true. T- that is true. Actually, um, if you look at the story of Joseph and Mary, mm. uh, they were not, they were engaged. But he had not taken her to be his wife. Mm. You remember the story? <laughs> we do. And uh, and uh, then the angel comes to him and it is said of Joseph that he was minded to put away Mary quietly mm. uh, because now she was with child. So that's an example of a couple that we are actually engaged, but they were wait- waiting for the, for the right time. Mm. Uh, a right time for us is a public declaration before the priest in the church that, and to the whole community that I've got married. So we have, we have a, a process that we go through, you know, the kwanjula and everything. So tra- even though tra- traditionally at engagement you've become husband and wife in a sense, mm. our practice... Our practice is that until you are declared husband and wife in the church, you are safer not to go physical with your partner. Okay. Interesting. If you have any questions for Dorothy, she's still around. 075 is the SMS line. Feel free to call us on 414 Twitter at Parfum Uganda. Tag at Dorothy Chisaka. And of course, uh, Facebook 104.1 Parfum with a capital B.